In the modern NBA, the three-point shot is king. And when shooters aren't bombing from deep, they're trying to get all the way to the rim. But what happens when you can't get those two shots off? In the playoffs, you face only good defenses. And they're designed specifically to run you off the line and wall off the paint. In order to win, you're going to have to find another way to score, especially in crunch time. And in this year's playoffs, we got the answer, the mid-range jump shot. If you don't have experience shooting these shots in the regular season, you're setting your team up to fail in the postseason. So let's go through all the clutch shots made in this year's playoffs from that in-between area to provide plenty of evidence that the mid-range game isn't just alive, it's vital to your offense. It's important to differentiate how these shots are generated, and down the stretch of tight games, it's the isolation that yielded a ton of these shots. Wizards down one to the Sixers in game four, and Bradley Beal attacks Danny Green off the dribble. Harris comes over to stop the penetration, and Beal just rises up for the fadeaway on the baseline to take the lead. Notice how much in-air turn is necessary to achieve proper alignment and the use of the right leg to control it. Clippers Suns, game two, Phoenix down one with the ball. They cut Devin Booker off a pin down and he gets to the elbow before pulling up over the strong contest by Beverly. Just under five to go as the Hawks have a two point lead over the Sixers. Joel Embiid gets the ball on the trail and when the little help from Collins stops him from driving, he gives it up, gets it back, and check the old school jab step game into fadeaway from 15 to tie it. In Boston, with the Nets trailing by five, Jason Tatum screens and then pops out to receive the pass. He then proceeds to give Kevin Durant a severe taste of his own medicine. With four defenders surrounding the paint, he hits him with a jab cross pull up from 18 to end the game. Back to Suns Clippers, game two. Paul George runs the same exact play that Booker did, hitting Crowder with a crossover into float dribble left right pull up, giving the Clippers a lead back late. In the crucial Game 5 between the Clippers and the Jazz, under two minutes left and LA clinging to a four-point lead. Paul George gives us another throwback ISO at the elbow, jab steps included, before drawing the foul and somehow hitting the shot for good measure. We were bound to get Kevin Durant into the sequence, as he's trying to lead his team back from a four-point deficit under a minute to go, and the nice jab step ball fake gets in the step on P.J. Tucker. Holiday is there to stop the layup, so he has to pull up at the baseline for the clean swish. And who can forget this beauty? This really shouldn't be in the video if not for one inch of his foot being on the three-point line, allowing Milwaukee to make it to overtime instead of going fishing. Let's go to the first round matchup between the Clips and the Mavs. Game five, two-point lead for Kawhi as he gets us thinking of the three ball before he jab crosses to the top of the key and then rising up right over Luka to extend the lead late. Chris Middleton hit more clutch mid-range shots than anyone else in this year's playoffs. And with his height and high release point, there's no question he's got an advantage. And it's that same advantage you get when using Manscaped's whole line of grooming tools for the modern man. By being properly trimmed, everything seems to flow that much better, and the newly designed Lawnmower 4.0 is truly breathtaking. Skin safe technology which reduces nicks and cuts. Cordless and waterproof, trim in the shower with no mess. Wireless charging with 90 minutes of use on a single charge. Get 20% off plus free international shipping when you click on my special link in the description below. You think Middleton made this shot because he practiced it a lot? Eh, maybe. But it's much more likely he's confident, smooth, and comfortable knowing that this lawnmower has a travel lock feature. No more embarrassing buzzing in your bag. I'm sure Chris packed his lawnmower in his bag during this trip to Atlanta for Game 3, as he called Barry's the long two over Bogdanovich to put them out of crunch time and end the game early. Of course, the pick and roll is another very common way that teams generated these clutch mid-range shots. Down two late in the fourth, and the Sixers desperately trying to sweep the Wizards, Seth Curry gets the Ben Simmons screen, and check how he slams on the brakes as Neto staggers. It leaves him with a nice hop into a 22-footer that ties the game. Back to the most epic of playoff series from this year, 
Game 7 between Brooklyn and Milwaukee, and Drew Holiday wants to extend the one-point lead deep in the fourth. When Giannis rolls to the rim, Blake Griffin is sucked into his gravity, giving Holiday a big opening to sidestep and pull up for the open 15-footer. In Game 3 of the same series, it was Kevin Durant's turn to tie the game up as Brook Lopez continued to back up deep into the lane. And it doesn't matter if Tucker and Giannis contest this shot, it's from 13 feet, he can elevate over them, and it drops straight through. He does it again in the next possession, against a team that simply will do everything it can to keep you from getting to the rim. The smart move is to hop into the 15-footer over his much smaller man, and it's almost a layup for KD. This game should be dubbed the mid-range game, as Middleton breaks a tie late in the game by using the ball screen from Giannis, catching Blake dropped a step too far as he hits an open 17-footer. And with just over two minutes left, Middleton kept up his back and forth with Durant as he doesn't even need the screen from Giannis to take the smaller Brown to the lane line, hold him off with the left arm, then rising up for the twisting push shot. I didn't want to use mid-range shots that were taken too close to the basket in the lane, but this one out of the pick and roll was tough as Middleton lets Brown get in front before doing a right foot turn into fadeaway from 14 feet over the good contest to break a tie in a crucial moment of this series. Middleton was the king of the midi, and who can forget game one between the Bucks and the Heat, where he won the game on this pick and roll dribble to the wing pull up from 18 feet over Duncan Robinson. Again, the in-air turn is vital with the right leg lifting to control the spin. We had just gotten into clutch minutes in Game 1 between the Jazz and the Clippers, and considering Utah barely won this game by three, this long two by Donovan Mitchell was crucial in giving them a cushion. Taking advantage of the defense by rejecting the ball screen is never a bad idea, as Devin Booker rips through to the right baseline on Tucker, tying the game up on this pull-up jumper off the glass with soft touch. Notice how his release point was a few inches more to his right than usual to avoid the contest. Game 4 had another couple of clutch mid-range shots from Middleton as Giannis screens and rolls and Chris sidesteps away from the pesky bridges to tie this game up with a fall away from 15. Not long after, he breaks the tie with this crucial basket after forcing the switch of Aiton onto him. He gets to the free throw line and drops this one in clean. In Game 6, he did it again, this time to extend the lead by rejecting the screen to get a step on Booker. And watch how we turn this into a dirt leg fadeaway to barely get this off, but put it through the net absolutely perfectly. While this is a handoff, it's the same concept of a pick and roll, as Middleton has Booker draped all over him, but he still hits the twisting long two to his right, giving the Bucks the separation they need to take the title. I decided not to include post-ups since we're really talking about jump shooting, but I did want to include a couple of buckets like this LeBron back down that turned into an incredibly difficult turnaround fadeaway from 15 that gave the Lakers some crucial breathing room in their game to win. And Giannis turned this back down into a dirt leg fade of his own, extending their lead enough to avoid any pressure down the stretch as they won this game going away. Surprisingly, there weren't a lot of mid-range clutch shots from off-ball screens. In a tie game between the Bucks and Heat in Game 1, Goran Dragic comes off a pin down into handoff at the free throw line, and when Holiday tried to go under but got spun around, it left Dragic wide open for the shot. At the very end of Game 2, and the Clippers desperate for a basket, they run Luke Kennard off a pin down, and on the curl, he isn't bothered by the Booker flyby, casually dropping this 17-footer in to cut the lead to 3. With the Knicks nursing a 1-point lead with 1.20 left, we got a trip to the museum as Alec Burks demonstrates the now extinct shot fake one dribble pull up to hit from 16 feet to give the Knicks a short lived three point lead. In game one of the Mavs clip series, they double Kawhi to stop him from doing damage. And grabbing the skip pass and attacking off the catch, this under control step back jumper tied the game up before the Mavs went on a 13 3 run to end the game. And in overtime of the absolutely crucial game five, which basically decided this series, it was Jokic who lured the double team off of Aaron Gordon's man, leading to the open shot from the foul line that kept the Nuggets in control until they ultimately won in double OT. So I hope I've made it clear that when it comes to crunch time in the NBA playoffs, you'd better have the reps you need to make these types of mid-range shots, because on many possessions, it's the only shot you're going to get. And if you miss, it could cost you the game, the series, and change the future of the NBA.